Are you ready? Check this out. Right here, we finally have rain. Once again, in Maryland, the heat wave is finally broken. I feel so good. You guys know what that means? It means that we can finally go catch some fish. Let's get going. We've made it out 75 minute drive later, a lake that I've never been to before. In fact, I've never even heard of this place before, before looking on Google Maps today. I figured I'm not catching any fish over in my area. Let's drive a little farther out and see if we can find some fish. If I don't catch anything today, I'm gonna lose my marbles. It has been insanely tough fishing in the hot weather with no rain. The conditions have changed. Before we start fishing though, let me show you guys what happened during my last fishing session. I drove two hours to New Jersey and fished in a $70 inflatable kayak with a few buddies. Let's take a look. Doing a good job pumping that up, JP. <laughs> this right here is our tournament vessel. I'm gonna be fishing my first tournament of 2020, and we're gonna be using a $70 inflatable kayak from Costco. This is gonna be interesting. Back out in the swamps, we've got fishing with Becca plus Grub fishing? Is that correct, bro? Fishing grubs. Fishing grubs. I'll have the links down below. And on my team, I've got my boy Jimmy yep. from Roar Fishing. So those are the rules, and big fish is going to be a lot of points. That is what we are going to go for. By the way, Joy, shout out for making these uh, fish masks. Appreciate that. Stop the spread of the virus. Let's go catch some fish. Kicking things off, we've got the filthy frog tied on. Not really sure whether the fish are gonna want it fast or slow, but we're just gonna cover as much water as possible until we can get our first bite, whether that's me or Jimmy, 2v2, KP, mostly just along for the ride mm -hmm. in this challenge. But later on, we're gonna try to get her on her PB, snakehead and or bass. Love to see something blow up in this frog right now. Oh, you got one, Jimmy? Nice, Jimmy! Dude, that's a big snakehead. Keep it in the boat. It's okay. It's all fast, but it counts. It's a three or four pound. Okay, okay, three or four pound snakehead. Jimmy got number one. We've got it on film, so that counts for our first fish. He's also using a frog. He's fishing the main lily pad area. We were trying the edges just to see what's going on, but we might have to switch if uh, Jimmy gets another bite. She took a bite. Look over here. I gotta make sure you bit it. Uh, oh, she bit it. Oh, she bit oh, it. it. I can see it. She took a chunk out of that spatter dock pad. These guys right here. I mean, it looks like it's okay. Yeah. It's not okay. Okay, no, it's not okay. Oh, man. Oh, oh I can't swallow it. Oh, that's right. I just bit it. I mean, it's you can't okay. swallow it. It's okay. You can go see a doctor afterwards. <laughs> Jimmy. No, I wouldn't go that far. They're not poison. Oh, yeah. I don't know if they're edible, but they are not poisonous. Hey, it's good fiber. I could probably, I can't even, exp I don't even know how to explain it. It's horrible. It's like the worst strong, it's strong and like my throat feels like it's suffocating. That's a good one, bro. Here we go, guys. That's a good, this guy's got a good one. Bike. All right, grubs. Cheers. Oh, he took a big bite. Oh, man. Dude. Do you think, uh -huh. it, was that the leaf? Uh -huh. Wait, you want to eat the leaf? No. A stem. All right, well, hey, I, I'm, I'm going to test the stem out, you know. I'm a bit of a foodie. I want to see what the stem is really like. I've got one right here. So we're gonna take, I'm gonna just rinse it off real quick. You know, before I eat fruits and veggies, always gotta give it a good wash. Get any, any potential pesticides, you know, just wash those right off. I'm gonna take a little bite of this stem right here. Oh, it's so bitter. 
Oh! Oh! That's so disgusting! How'd you eat that? Wait, that's actually the most bitter thing I've ever eaten. That was absolutely... I thought they were exaggerating a little bit. That is one of the most bitter tasting plants I've ever... Are you sure that's not poisonous? It's not poisonous. It tastes freaking poisonous. I did tell you it's bitter. Yeah, the, you guys were not kidding. No, we were not. You guys are Hey, gotta give these guys credit for taking that punishment like a true man and woman. That was, that was not easy. All right, how am I gonna catch fish today? Step one, scope out the conditions. Clearly, this place is flooded. The water is coming up to the grass line. Let's step up on this boulder right here. Very slippery. Water is stained. It's actually still very warm, probably in the mid 80s. And if you look out here, it's dead calm, overcast condition. I'm thinking that we've got to go top water right now. I can see a lot of grass littered across the bottom and on most of the surface. So we're going to have to go something relatively weedless like a uh, frog, a popper, or a hound, as long as I don't cast it in the weeds. All right, what are we gonna use? It's gotta be either the popper or the hound. Let me go ahead and start by throwing the hound first. I'm gonna try to cover some water, and then if that doesn't work, then we'll switch to a nice bluegill colored popper, because that's probably the main forage out here. Whew. Wouldn't that be amazing if I could get a nice top water bite going today, guys? That would be like a dream come true. Let's tie this guy on and uh, see what happens. Cast number one. Something's popping over there. Nice easy cast. Right towards some open area. Close to the cover. Work the bait with some nice quick twitches. I think I already caught some grass. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I caught some grass already. This place is going to be a little tricky to fish. Yep, look at that. Some beautiful looking healthy hydrilla. That's definitely what the fish are going to be in. So let's just try to work our way around it and fish as efficiently as possible until we can find our first bite. Not going to lie guys, my fish senses are already tingling. Oh, oh my gosh, I got a bite. That was a really small fish. What I tell you guys, I mean this bait just looked too freaking good in the water. I think I caught more grass. Right after I had, had that little bite, something popped my bait. Yep. And I caught, oh look at this, look at this stuff. That's not the stuff you want to catch. This right here, let's take a look at what kind of grass we got. I mean this is unfishable if I get caught in that kind of stuff. Then underneath it, this milfoil, something underneath it, all kinds of Nice looking vegetation here, but we do have fish, so that's a really good sign. And apparently they will hit top water. Oh, there it is! There's number one! Yes! Oh, it feels good. That feels really good. Oh, not a giant, but... That is fish number one coming right basically in the middle, which is, a sh I mean, this place is shallow all around, it seems. So I'm not surprised to catch fish all over the place. Whew. Don't hook me. Okay. Look at that. Front hook. When they're trying to eat the bait head first like that, that means you've chosen, chosen the right bait. Absolutely beautiful. Nice, chunky, almost one pounder. Scope it out. I mean, oh, there's something, something jumping over. Oh, we gotta let this guy go. Thing's about to pop off. Thank you, my friend. Whew, breaking my cold streak. I've literally been skunked. I'm not even gonna lie, guys. I've been skunked the last four times I've been out fishing. It has been absolutely, I don't remember the last time fishing was this tough for me. All right, we're gonna make another cast right in the middle. That's where we got a bite before. Something's on it. Something's waking on my bait right now. There's another one! Same spot! This one's a little bigger. Do you guys see the way these fish are blowing up? 
That is absolutely incredible. I mean, I'm fishing about 20 yards off that island right there, so it's not an unusual place to find. This one's good. This one's real good. Oh yeah. Oh my, oh yeah. Come to daddy. Get in the, oh, the rock. That one right here, that is not a bad way to start your morning. Look at the girth on this fish. Got him with two hooks this time. Okay. Got to be very careful around these super sharp Guggen trebles. They'll get you. Ah, look at that fish. Absolutely beautiful. We are 15 minutes in the fishing, guys, and we are absolutely putting a smack down on these fish. That is what I'm talking about. Let's let you go, thick girl. Not an old fish, but I have a feeling she's gonna grow up, be big and strong. Let you go right over here. I'm gonna watch you swim off. Went right under the rock, actually. And you know what, guys? I don't think you see me fish the hound on this channel. I fished it on the Guggen Squad channel, but this is my this might be my first time showing it to you guys. So let me show you what we got here. We've got a very slim profile walking bait. Usually they only have two treble hooks. We've put three on them, increases the hookup ratio. As you saw that last fish actually had the middle treble in its mouth. So it will give you a much better hookup ratio. Cast like a bullet and the action, super effortless. Look at this. With the slightest twitch, you can get that bait to dart side to side. I mean, piece of cake. Make it look like a fleeing bait fish in the water. And you're gonna catch some fish. Hopefully some chunky ones like I'm catching right now. I'm gonna make the exact same cast because that's two fish in a row, right from the same spot. They might be grouped up over there. Might be some kind of underwater structure in that area. Maybe a nice depression where the fish are just hanging out. Whatever it is, there's a lot of fish over there. Oh my gosh. That's something small. I tangled my bait. I got a little, little excited with that hook set. All right, bait's good. Let's get back over there. You know what? I think that was something guarding fry because I saw some little flickering movement when it got scared. And immediately after, something relatively small hit the hound. There could be snakehead in here. It's possible. If that's the case, that could be what I got on the first bite of the day. Little tiny snakehead hitting my bait. My right, snakeheads are just invading everywhere in Maryland. Oh, there's another fish, yes! Oh yes! This is a bass though. Oh yes! Oh he got off, are you freaking? Wait no, wait oh, he's on, he's on, he's on! He's running, oh it's bigger! He's running at me. Oh, come on, stop jumping! Gotta keep him pegged. Keep your rod tip low. Oh man, he's really head shaking down there. Oh, he's not even that big. <sighs> Keep him off the ground. That right there, look at that. Oh, geez, we're down to one treble. Ah, <sighs> oh, feels good, man. <laughs> this is the first good top water bite I've had all year long. After kayaking with that frog for six hours, not catching anything, catch fish like these feels absolutely amazing well a little sore under the tongue that's kind of interesting on this fish right. another healthy chunk on the hound uh, I will fish this bait as long as these fish want to bite it Whew, I'll show you guys the power that one went under the rock too Whew. Have the Guggen topwater walking bait, known as the Hound. You know what? This bait actually has action very similar to my previous all-time favorite walking bait. It was a bait that would walk super easily, but it also sputters and spits out water, kind of like a aggressively fleeing bait fish. So you guys can—I don't know if you guys can see that water being sput out, but it's because of this 
curved lip right here. A lot of walking baits don't have that. So it's kind of a hybrid walker popper, you could say, but it's, essentially it is a walker. It just has a little bit of spitting action. And that is something that can drive fish absolutely crazy when they're looking to feed. I'm literally casting. That's gotta be, that's over 50. There's another one. Over 50. I, it's so weird. All my fish are coming at the end of mega bomb casts, like right in the middle. I don't know what's going on out there, but that's where just all, all the fish are hanging out. As a bank fisherman, being able to cast far is a super important skill that you must have. I mean, otherwise I wouldn't be catching these fish. I started the day casting parallel to the bank, didn't catch Jack, and now I'm catching, oh, these, I mean, these are not giant fish, but if you live in Maryland or the Northeast, you will take these fish every single day of the week. I mean, they're all literally copies of each other, all about pound and a half. They're nice shoulders on them, aggressively feeding, and I'm hooking, the last few I've hooked on the back two hooks, so it's getting a little later. They might be getting slightly less aggressive in their feeding, but again, that middle hook popping off. There we go. Whew. I'll tell you guys what. I have not even been fishing for an hour yet. I think I've got five fish. It's either four or five. But for Maryland, bank fishing, this is like a dream come true. I'm going to keep making bomb casts because the fish are biting. And if there's a lot of pound and a halfers, I know there's got to be a three, four, or five somewhere in here. Just got to catch enough little well, littler ones till I find the big one. All I can say is, thank goodness I brought out Old Faithful. Got it on long distance casting mode. 17 years old, she still works. That's, this is absolutely nuts. I mean, I cannot, I actually, I don't know what is going on here. I don't know if it's the bait, the conditions post storm, or if this lake is just, I just found a gold mine, but I'm just breaking in these fish. I'm literally six for six today. I don't think I've ever fished this consistently with the topwater bait. Every fish that actually ate the bait, I've hooked up into. <sighs> We're gonna let him go. We're gonna find your mommy sooner or later. I mean, this is a young fish, but there's gotta be older fish in there somewhere. I'm gonna watch this, I'm gonna watch this, watch this. Oh, 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 dang it. I wanted to let it go on top of the weed mat. Show you guys how they can burrow through that. All right. No more bites, so we're gonna make a little move and leave our honey hole that we found. We're gonna try to fish this region right here. Same tactic, bomb cast right towards the middle. And we'll see if we can find any fish on this side because I have yet to get a single bite to the left of the island. Oh my gosh, right in front of me. Oh my, it's going in the weeds. Oh yes, get out of there. Get out of there, big girl. Oh my, not even that big. I don't even think that big. These guys are so freaking chunky. Get in the boat. Whoa, whoa, holy crap. That thing's a mondo. No, 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 oh no, no. Well, unfortunately, I didn't get to show you that last fish in all of its glory. It was a three pounder that was the shortest, chubbiest, ch you know what I'm talking about. It was literally like this long, but this fat. The, I'm not even kidding. The girth probably exceeded the length on this fish. If I had a tape measurement and, and took a measurement, Unfortunately, she hopped off the hook and uh, she flopped back in the water. So no official weight, definitely about three pounds. I mean, 
the chunkiest bass I've caught this year thus far. Not the biggest, but definitely the chunkiest. And she was hooked on only the middle treble on the hound. I actually have not gotten any bites in over about in over 30 minutes. So I was gonna switch baits, but I made a couple more casts. And that, that thing hit right in front of me. So that was just incredible. Let me go ahead and show you guys the gear I'm using. Cause what I want to do out here is I want to experiment with some different baits. Now that I know that the fish are hitting, I want to see what truly is the best bait to use under these conditions. Cause so far I've only used a single bait that my gut told me to use. It worked out great, but uh, there's a few other baits in mind that I think could work really, really well. As for gear, you know, I'm using my 17 year old one reel, which is my Antares DC. <sighs> We've been through a lot together never let me down. I've caught in like 200 pound alligators in this thing. Then as for a rod, I'm using a seven foot medium fast all purpose rod. When I'm out here, I'm only carrying one rod and one reel with me most of the time. So I like to use a combination that can fish a wide variety of baits. And I feel like this one right here is the most versatile for the conditions that I typically fish. Then as for line, which is just as important, if not more important than the rod and reel, I've got 20 pound Guggen braid spooled up. And what I do 90% of the time is I actually tie on a leader for whatever conditions I'm fishing. That could be a 10 pound, 12 pound, 15, 20 pound, usually fluorocarbon, sometimes monofilament, depending on what I need. So using top water, I've got 15 pound Guggen mono tied on using a Alberto knot, AKA improved Albright knot. I like to do five twists up and down. I've made videos showing that knot if you guys want to learn it, but that's going to be it for this video. Cause uh, it's time to do some experimenting. I don't know what it was guys. I've not caught fish in a long time. Could be the lake, could be the nice cool weather, rainy conditions, or it could be this hat. I, you guys have only seen me wear hats like two times ever in my videos. And uh, both the times I've worn this hat, things have gone pretty well. I think everyone typically has a lucky fishing hat. This one is uh, now mine. <sighs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully no more long pauses between videos. Gonna do my best to get on the fish now that conditions have turned in my favor. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.